Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marco Minghini. I work at the GRC together with Margherita. Uh, she's a consultant in our uh, digital economy unit. I'm just introducing the work. We will talk about earth observation and cloud platforms in particular, but uh, from a user point of view. Uh, in Europe, we have a lot. We are funding also a lot of cloud platforms, but what about the users? So that's the question, and Margherita will actually share some reflections and results. Thanks. So uh, imagine a world where every decision made about our planet future is backed uh, by the most accurate data available. Now, what if accessing it, uh, and using that data was as easy as browsing your favorite website? This is uh, all about the user, this presentation. Um, why we are talking about it? Um, so the, the European strategy for data aiming, uh, aimed at uh, creating a single market for uh, uh, data sharing and uh, uh, stressed also uh, on the need to prioritize uh, uh, people needs uh, in uh, technology and also to promote uh, values and uh, rights uh, uh, typical of the uh, European Union. And uh, uh, the European Commission um, put large investments uh, into um, this uh, idea. And uh, this led to the proliferation um, of uh, European infrastructures for uh, Earth observation, which had uh, um, different uh, um, targets, let's say. But um, they. Uh, don't always translate into uh, users' uh, uh, satisfaction. So um, we noticed that uh, there was a difficulty in uh, pairing the user's demand with the offer. And uh, uh, the fragmentation of the landscape uh, uh, didn't uh, uh, help in this. Um, so we started uh, our work uh, that we presented last year with an inventory and a classification of existing cloud platforms for observation, uh, mainly um, European, uh, funded by, by uh, European Commission. And uh, uh, we um, inventoried over uh, 150 uh, platforms. And it's, it's only um, a small amount compared to what is uh, actually uh, out there. So uh, we uh, continued this uh, work with, uh, um, co by conducting an analysis of the user experience. Uh, why? Uh, because uh, um, an effective user experience uh, um, can lead to the um, adoption of uh, um, and more effective use of Earth observation uh, data and uh, can maximize uh, the, the value um, that they provide. So our target user is, uh, uh, because users of uh, uh, European platforms are um, very uh, diverse, uh, can be scientists, can be decision makers, analysts, and so on. And their workflow differ a lot. So we had to focus on a target user. Um, and we choose uh, prominent policy priority use cases that require heterogeneous data to be um, shared. So first, uh, we uh, started, um, uh, so uh, the objective of, of this uh, analysis are first to identify the use, what are the user needs, the requirements uh, of the, these use cases, what are the commonalities, uh, the commonalities, the trends, and also the, uh, the bottlenecks that they face, and uh, uh, which infrastructure do they use, uh, for which services, uh, which data sets they pick, uh, who are their customers. And uh, 
We did that um, along the whole uh, software, um, the, the whole development life cycle of a use case. So um, we wanted to uh, understand if the current offer covers the whole uh, life cycle. Uh, in the end, what, what we are trying to achieve uh, is to uh, kickstart uh, the co-design of a self-evaluation um, framework, uh, self-evaluation guidelines uh, to be used by the platforms to um, better need, uh, meet the user's demand. We started by a systematic review of uh, um, eShape, which is uh, um, um, a European funded um, program in which uh, several use cases are developed, uh, several uh, policy relevant use cases. So we uh, started by analyzing uh, what, uh, what is the their uh, publication, their scientific production, uh, their uh, um, web um, publications, and we uh, performed uh, data mining and uh, researched uh, the platforms that uh, were mentioned and uh, tried from there to um, understand which services uh, uh, they were using from the platforms. And then we also involved uh, the project leaders to understand if uh, our, um, uh, our hypothesis were near um, uh, to the reality. Then we also uh, conducted a survey regarding the user experience uh, for the use cases. And we actually asked uh, these uh, use cases how they use these platforms, which platforms they use, uh, why they choose these platforms, if they had a bad experience with a certain platform, why did they abandon it, what did they not uh, find in, in, that, in that platform, and so on. Um, the results, we, um, we had to interpret a little bit what they were saying. So uh, we came up with uh, identifying uh, a set of uh, dimensions and uh, uh, indicators within this, uh, these dimensions. The first uh, large dimension is, of course, interoperability because uh, these users require the integration of uh, several different data and services coming from different sources. So the first thing is to uh, be interoperable. Interoperability in terms of uh, data, in terms of models, uh, services, but also semantic interoperability. The second dimension is accessibility. Uh, we noticed that users have different needs um, because there are different users also between among among the um, use cases that we analyzed uh, the, the users are diverse for example there are early warning systems that needs uh, most update uh, data right now so it's not acceptable for them to order uh, the last uh, satellite image and uh, uh, get it the day after. On the contrary, modelers might be happy with that. So timeliness varies according to uh, the type of users. But also variety, of course, granularity, uh, the resolution, the coverage and so on. Uh, accessibility to models is also something that uh, uh, is um, a plus. So if there are pre-built models or algorithms already available in a platform, and this is also um, 
typical of the research platforms that share algorithms. Uh, accessibility to services, that can be MLOps, DevOps, no code, analysis ready data, a lot of different services. Uh, then the accessibility uh, for um, diverse users. And then uh, security and privacy, of course. Then uh, this is one big problem that we uh, observed, the discoverability, because there are so many different um, platforms and services that we notice that there is no one uh, single place where one can uh, find them. This is also why we felt the need to inventory what is out there. So it would be really great if um, not only the data but also the services offered were inventoried and stored in a catalog with complete metadata. It would be also nice if um, platforms would share usage analytics, so to understand if a certain uh, service is uh, well uh, accepted or not, well developed or not. Also, okay, optimization for search engine and, uh, as I said, uh, service catalogs. The documentation, of course, is very important, not only the completeness, but also the frequency of updates and the coverage of use cases. So something that you, um, you, you want to develop something and you can find something that is similar, so it's easier for you to start. And it's, it's really the, the, the learning uh, curve um, to this kind of platforms is some, sometimes very steep. So use cases, most of the use cases declare that um, they took more, than, more time than they thought initially. They allocated more time to start a project. So, of course, also uh, the possibility to um, explore the development environment before buying anything, because sometimes the platform asks you to fill an application form before accessing the services, but you don't really know if it's worth it. You don't really know if uh, they offer what you need. So, trying them out uh, is very important. The customization is an aspect that not all the use cases uh, look for, but it's uh, important for other use cases. So the customization of user interface, data visualization, most importantly, the um, workflow customization. And also uh, the possibility to customize user role and permissions. Customer support, of course. Um, it's, it's very important. One um, uh, thing that emerged here is the value of um, supporting, uh, support in different languages. We didn't think of this, but uh, apparently this is uh, important and was valued uh, by some use cases. Uh, some use cases uh, changed the platform because they had the uh, support in their language. The community, of course, uh, is, is very important. How the community is engaged, uh, if there are mechanisms in place to uh, share knowledge, collaboration opportunities, uh, inclusivity, uh, user uh, mentoring support. This is another uh, aspect that uh, um, came up a lot. The pricing uh, might seem obvious, but it's not, because uh, you don't always realize how much you spend. I mean, doing a, a, um, a real simulation is, is not trivial. And, um, and also a price comparison between uh, platforms for, for similar services. Because first, because they don't expose sometimes the, um, the actual uh, uh, prices in, uh, let's say, in an um, 
standardized way so that uh, there could be, for example, services that compare the offers, like for example, for, for uh, the telephone offer uh, happens, but uh, in the uh, cloud platforms is more difficult. Uh, also, uh, it would be uh, nice to uh, have um, some sort of a prepaid option so that you don't spend, m you don't spend more than you, uh, you want to. So like a threshold or something. Uh, sustainability is also an important aspect. Uh, it's twofold. One, is, um, one aspect is uh, the sustainability after the initial funding. So the platforms um, must uh, be strong enough to live without the, the public funding. So they uh, need to find a, a viable business model. And also the, uh, let's say, um, ecological sustainability is also important. And then the last one is about performance, but we didn't go into detail because uh, here uh, it's really a matter of uh, um, the type of, uh, I mean, if you want to develop a, a benchmark, uh, you have to uh, select uh, similar uh, platforms in order to run the benchmark. So here is uh, a little more general. So uh, we are now in, uh, at the point of uh, validation. So we identified this, uh, uh, mm, these indicators, but we need your help to validate them. So we prepared the survey and we ask you to, uh, to complete it because we need to um, understand what you think uh, the most important indicators are. So here is my conclusion. Uh, EO platform's landscape is fragmented. fragmented. Uh, a UX analysis led to the uh, identification of uh, prominent user demand, which translated into 10 dimensions and indicators. And we, um, we want to uh, start this co-design self-evaluation guidelines. And we need your um, help to validate these dimensions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Margarita. And also, you have been incredibly in time. <laughs> uh, are there questions? The next keynote doesn't start earlier if you wait here. <laughs> so I'd, I'd like to ask a question. So um, as, a, as a also platform user, does this also relate to these platforms? Because you didn't name any here explicitly, right? No. Okay. Um, I was afraid I missed them. But those, also those ones that were used during the time of the DS platforms? Does yes, it, the like, DS. Vicar, so we consider the DS as those one of them, like Vekeo and uh, Creodias and, and those ones, okay. Has uh, anybody uh, used uh, these uh, DIAS platforms? Yeah, that's good, that's so good. So you can uh, help me filling the survey, eh? Yeah, do it. Do it. Uh -huh. <laughs> so now we are looking, take your phones out. <laughs> <laughs> Luis. So you can... So, Margarita, well, thank you for this address. I think we need to have this conversation. I have a broader question. Can we eventually get past this fragmentation? Can we eventually one day get to something like this concept of the European Open Science Cloud being an actual place where I go and do my, uh, where I run my models? No, I think I can talk from here. I think with the data spaces, something will change. Because if we manage to integrate uh, services from different platforms, the experience from the user should be seamless. I mean, this is the idea, of course. 
it depends on the implementation. But I, I don't think uh, platforms will be extinguished. I think that we will find the services much easier. I hope. Yeah, I would like to add, I think a little bit of competition in this case is fine. For example, when Synergize put the images of Sentinel in the cloud, it was a huge step forward and it made uh, using a, uh, only the bounding boxes instead of downloading the whole tile. Uh, it was a huge advancement, I think. So, uh, so competition is good because it, it makes the, uh, the data spaces better. Uh, so I think there will always be multiple data spaces, and I think it will improve actually the, the yeah, different yeah, data spaces. The idea is uh, the data spaces are connected to each other. So the idea is that uh, they are thematic, but they are not silos. So you should be able to interact between them. Right. But the, the market also provides some data spaces, right? So the, the DIAS is, is partly funded by ESA and partly by the, the market itself, right? If I understand. Yeah. That's the business model. Yeah. Because otherwise they, uh, I mean, imagine you develop a project uh, trusting that the platform will be there for 10 other years and then nobody pays for it. I mean. Yeah, yeah, of course, so the, the market should uh, be the ones that make the, these platforms keep on existing. That, uh, is, is that the point or not? Yes, it's Yeah. Yeah, so and my point there is that there will always be multiple platforms. Yes, and, but and the idea is, is not uh, getting rid of the platform, it's yeah. using them and make the most out of them because they are uh, already there, they have been created, so we should get the most out of them. Yeah, no, definitely. But that is the idea, yeah, thanks, not to kill them this, all. Thanks uh, for this research, yeah. <laughs> so you were technically agreeing with each other. Okay, cool. Um, uh, okay, yeah, jump right in. Now that you developed this framework, is there a simple way to maybe just use the framework, have a survey, put it on your cloud platform to get more than, than uh, these few respondents that, that you have so far? Yes, so um, the responses that I uh, got are related to a precedent sur uh, survey that we have developed uh, and we have uh, ad addressed to the use cases. And the results are already on uh, GitHub. I published the link to the repository. Uh, you can uh, find everything there. Uh, the only problem uh, is that uh, uh, lately uh, GitHub uh, has a problem with the PDF. So uh, I, I think uh, it, they are corrupted. But uh, I will make sure that if you're interested, uh, <laughs> you will get them. But uh, now I noticed this uh, in uh, several uh, PDF files uh, on GitHub, so I, I don't think it's, it's a problem of our particular case. But okay. More questions? So uh, as, a, as a roundup, the idea is that uh, there will not be, we still don't want to have like one big provider, but uh, the framework shall support that you can still choose, let's say, your computation provider, but um, within a common framework as such. Is that right? Yeah, so the idea is, um, okay, I, oh, yeah, okay. The idea is um, for the user to be able to choose what is the service that they need at the uh, most convenient price. Like, for example, when you uh, pick up a uh, um, phone company, no? So you, you can uh, see what is there, and according to your needs, you pick, a, uh, you pick one. So the idea is this, to, to have uh, the most information publi public so that uh, also brokers of information can 
create like um, a one-stop shop, like they say, so that you can be able to, to choose. Thanks for um, conducting this survey. And you just talked about this kind of meta platform where you list all the platforms and their capabilities and their data. Or that was an idea that you at least mentioned in the talk. And are there any ideas that you're implementing something like that, maybe from JRC side or from any other side? Well, the idea is not to develop a another yet another platform no a list, uh, and, a list. and also uh, one uh, web page it's more for the uh, platforms to expose the data in a um, standardized way so that anyone can create this kind of uh, um, website Maybe to, to answer the point on the list, I'm not sure if that was a uh, misunderstanding. So Margarita mentioned about the list. That was something we did last year. And there's a paper and there's a presentation at Vos4G last year. You find this list of platform names. And then we also went one step farther and trying to understand what are what we consider, uh, let's say, the enablers. So what, uh, instead of creating a new platform, you may you know, get from what already exists and build on that, which is the, the bottom line here. So don't reinvent the wheel, don't create another platform because we have already uh, enough. Try rather to build on what already works uh, in practice and is, is demonstrated to work. Now we made another step and we try to look at the user side and the user satisfaction when using platforms. Of course, that we, we had an idea of trying to use these kind of principles to assess one or more platforms, but this is, uh, of course, uh, an endless exercise. So we rather leave this to, to you, to users, to try to you know, take this uh, set of principles and perhaps uh, try to assess your own platform and understand first if you agree with the principles, and then if yes, try to apply them. Of course, we would like to hear some feedback also. Well, uh, just one uh, import very important point. We are not evaluating the platforms. We are trying uh, to uh, get your feedback on the importance that the indicators have for you as a user, but the uh, indicators are for platforms for self-evaluation. So we are not trying to evaluate platforms here. 